All right, everyone, it's another weekend. That means it's weekender time. But before we get stuck into the show, I want to let you know that next week on beastofwar.com is a special Infinity Week. Justin, what are we going to be talking about? We're having a look at the Human Sphere N3 book. This is going to be updating tons of rules, tons of factions, and we have some epic prizes to give away this week. We've got three copies of Operation Ice Storm. We've got two mega starter bundles, including the Onyx Contact Force, the US Ariadne Starter Force, and the N3 rulebook. Two copies of that for you and a mate. Stay tuned, watch the videos to find out how to win. Oh my goodness, that's exciting <laughs> stuff. And we have an exciting show today. Mm -hmm. We've got no less than two guests in. We've got a guest in from Spartan to talk about Halo games. Mm -hmm. Ground-based games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we've got Alessio in to talk about a class board game too. Yeah, mm -hmm. Hunt for Red October. Exciting yeah. stuff. And Jono, you're going to talk about some books. I have a little bit of Flames of War new stuff, Pacific Theatre, that I'm going to be chatting about. And that just scratches the surface. Come on, let's get stuck into the show. Everyone, we have a jam packed show for you this week. Oh my goodness, it's exciting stuff. We've had no less than two guests, two guests in this week to mm -hmm. talk about stuff. I myself get to talk to Neil Fossett all about the Halo Ground Command game that's coming out. All right, all, all about the starter set and stuff. Man, am I excited! All right, so wait, till you, wait till you see some of that. All right, Justin, well, <laughs> I believe you've been chatting to someone as well. Yeah, well, I can be a little smug here because myself and John got to sit down with Alessio Cavatori himself to talk about the Hunt for Red October board game that he's got coming out soon. Ooh. So we're having a look at, you know, sort of early prototypes of the board, seeing the actual box of the stuff being complete. Lots of goodies to talk about in this one. Cool stuff. And as if that isn't enough, we have an awesome prize. Mm. Battlefront have given us uh, an opportunity to give away an awesome set of premium painted terrain that they've brought right. out this week. All right, Dan, what is this? Yeah, so this is their range that's coming out this year. It's a full set of six that'll go to one lucky winner in the comments. Uh, yeah, you get a whole set of these buildings and they'll, you'll get them as they come out throughout the year. So they're going to be coming out every sort of six weeks in the beginning of uh, May time, I think. So yeah. Oh, Fantastic very cool. set, yeah. Very cool. It's a set of six buildings, as you've said there, Ben, but it's a limited number. If you go back a couple of pages there, Justin, oh, so you, want to you see can this? see yeah. that it's a limited to 600 sets, so yeah. if you win it, that's cool. Aye, aye. Well, you, you're getting something that not everybody's going to have. But um, the thing that's unique about it is if you do win this prize, mm. you'll be getting them about every six weeks because they're doing a staggered release on this. Okay? Yes. So if, yeah. you're, if you don't win the prize, there's a way to buy them. You aye. can buy them prepaid or pay as you go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you buy them prepaid, mm -hmm. every six weeks, right, boom, one will, boom, one will boom, get boom, posted to you. Through. Yeah. And if you buy them pay as you go, right. again, every six weeks, they'll get posted to you. Right, you. You can pay as you want. But you'll yes. be paying as yeah. you want. So right. you might ask, well, what's the difference? The difference is, mm. if you do the prepaid option, you get the sixth building for free. Ah, which is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I so like that idea. Let's have a look. Uh, what we've got here then. All right, well, let's, let's have a look. The first one that I was having a look at here, we have a steelwork factory. So this can be used in any kind of sort of timeline. Start at World War II and work your way right the way up through Team Yankee. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got some destroyed and bombed out buildings if you want a little bit more of a ruin table. We've got, ooh, nice clock tower. I mm, like this. Yeah. The thing with these is they're really nice uh, sort of feature pieces. Mm. So you could use most of these to be sort of the central area for an objective or something like that. For example, rallying around the clock tower in the center of a city or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, or you've got, what's this, the estate house. This is really yes. nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's cool stuff. Ben, yeah. do we know roughly when, when the, the offer ends for this? Yeah, the offer for this ends on the 30th of March. So yeah, you haven't got long to, to go if you want to get in on this. I, I definitely sort of try and go for the, uh, the subscription. And then if you also win them as well, well, there you go. Some extra things mm. on top of that. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. awesome. And do you know what these are really cool for? And we talked about it last week. Go ahead. Tanks. These would be yeah. awesome for tanks. Yeah, yes. you could do yeah, have some really nice so, tank yeah. boards. Because obviously it's aimed at the Flames War range. Mm -hmm. So I mean, tanks and this set, I... you're golden. Yeah, It'd yeah. be really, really cool. Ben, um, when, it, when, when it comes to the, to the clock tower and stuff like that, mm. bring yes. up the clock tower. Yeah, I yeah. think it's actually one of the really cool sets 
in it mm. because it's not often you get the likes of a clock tower and stuff mm. to be thrown into the middle of a table. Yeah, I mean, they, they've gone for the uh, the standard stuff with the things like the ruined buildings, but they've also done, as I said, sort of feature pieces, so things that you wouldn't normally see. I mean, the last one that they're, uh, the six that they're doing is the damaged Eastern Church, and that's something that, like, I think people who've played DayZ might remember those kind of churches from that, that sort of area, mm -hmm. uh, and it'd be nice to have some of those dotted around sort of as major focus points for the uh, maybe the intel and the HQ of the different bases and stuff that have been played. So in that case, great for Team Yankee. And also you could push it all the way back and go to World War II and you could do something there with the Russians and the Germans fighting it out on the Eastern Front. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think we've seen a church like that very similar in the range before. So oh, yes. it must yeah. be popular if they revisit it. But the, yeah. the thing I like about the range is the modularity. Mm -hmm. Like the clock tower, for example, you can build it up in right. little chunks. Yes. Right. And they've got a video about each of the products on there so as you can see mm. which lids turn off or lift off and stuff. Right. My favourite has to be the Steelworks factory. Uh, so this? Yeah, you get one in the set, but I'd really like six of them to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> because if you... If yeah. you well, I think there's one of them. There you go, stop right. there. There we go. How cool would it be to have a whole set of them yeah. and you're just trundling tanks in around the so factory like, set? You're just looking to do a German factory complex table. Yes, you know, some pretty RAF awesome. yeah, just to come along and you know drop some shells on. Absolutely, right. Moving on, that this pretty much takes us into the news. But I'll just recap. Comment in the show below for your chance to win mm. all six of them. All yes. six of them. Yep. You'll get them as a staggered release because that's just the way it's been made. Yeah. But you will get all six. Comment below for your chance to win. Awesome cool. stuff. Very cool. Right. Moving on with the news, fellas. Yes. What's exciting? Hawk. Is it? At, at Hawk War Games and Drop Fleet Commander, they're showing more images of the, the Sheltari and the PHR fleet online. They're looking absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to get my hands on this game. Yeah. Look at this slide. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, the new in images showed off uh, a lot more of the PHR ships all painted up and ready mm -hmm. to go. There's an uh, image of the whole fleet for the PHR as well. Mm -hmm. And then, also, of course, you've got the Sheltari there. They're looking fantastic in their bright oranges and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The other really cool thing that came up in this uh, sort of preview was a look at one of their civilian cruisers uh, called yeah. the Princess. And there's going to be a whole scenario based around this that you get with the game. And well, with the model itself. So it'd be fantastic to see how that actually plays out. Like, are you rescuing it from attackers and things like that? It'd be really awesome. Yeah. I'm but, really <coughs> looking forward to getting my hands on this game. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's looking to be really tactically deep. And the factions are looking to have some real flavor to them once you get them down on the tabletop. Yeah, I'm excited to see more PHR stuff because um, mm. I, I wasn't really expecting that to be my favorite fleet. Right. But when I seen it, oh. I, I was just like, because. Because Dave was here not so long ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Myself and Dave sat down for a good old chat about it. And you just had the fleet there, or, or you had the ships, and I was looking at the PHR ones going, oh, I well, just want them. I tell, I tell you what, Lloyd. Myself and John actually did go in for this Kickstarter, right? So at the level we went in on, we're getting two very large fleets. I'm getting Scourge, he's getting UCM. I'm getting some PHR, and he's getting some Sheltari. So if you want, once I have this all built and painted, you and me can maybe actually get a game on, and I'll let you play as the PHR. What do you think? Cool, cool, what absolutely. You I'll take game you up on. on that challenge. All right, game on. Ben, what yes. about Drop Fleet? Is it, is it exciting you? I, I, I must say, I've had some sort of rumblings in the back of my mind thinking about the old days of Battlefleet Gothic and stuff like that, and since, you know, Andy Chambers is behind this, the mind behind Battlefleet, it might be a good idea to get stuck into this. I think I might have to go for the PHR as well, <laughs> mainly because they've named everything after sort of mythical gods and stuff. Yeah. So I like all that. Um, so I'd have to go for PHR, and I like the sleek nature of their ships, mm. with all the inner working showing as well behind the scenes. It's great, yeah. yeah. I will warn you now, if you're taking the PHR from the discussions I've had with Dave, broadsides are your big friend in this. They don't yeah. have a lot of forward-facing weapons, so you're going to be powering forward through the table just trying to line up broadsides. If you can get both going at the same time, go nuts. But yeah. you're going to have your work cut out for you whenever you've got things like the UCM cruisers and stuff firing burn-through lasers at you all day long. Cool. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, if that's exciting you, you can find out more about it because you did an interview, like we said, with Dave and yep. one of the... On one of the previous weekenders, what, just yep. a few weeks back? It's a few weeks back. I'll see if I can hunt down the link to the show. Awesome. Right. Now, another cool thing. It's not really news as in releases and stuff like that, but next weekend is Adapticon. Of course. But we're going to talk about it now, because next weekend it'll have already started. <laughs> ben, what are we doing with Adapticon this year? Yeah, so uh, Dawn and Jana are going to be going to Adepticon, and they will be covering it in a big live blog, maybe two of them, 
depending on how much stuff comes out. Mm -hmm. They'll be running from March 31st all the way to uh, April the 3rd. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're going to be there covering all the fantastic stuff from the vendors' halls, loads of things that are happening with the events, mm -hmm. all the tournaments, looking at the armies, the painting competition. Mm -hmm. so obviously, Crystal Brush happens there as well. Basically, there is going to be a huge explosion of hobby geekiness uh, towards the end of next week. Yeah. Awesome. And what are some of the highlights? <laughs> yeah, so some of the highlights are that, um, well, one of the things that popped up on the website and uh, they like honed in on very quickly was that uh, Den of Imagination have done a really awesome prize for the people who are uh, playing in the Warhammer 40,000 tournament. And that is that they will win a fantastically painted Titan or Knight Titan, Ooh. as they've called it. Yeah, so this is a fantastic prize for someone to somehow try and get back on a plane. I thought, um, I how thought, they do that, I don't know. But. I thought this was an exciting prize when I thought they were just going to win the miniature. I hadn't occurred to me until you just said it that they, this the painted version, this this actual miniature that we're looking yeah, at. Yeah. Now I say miniature, this is a big behemoth of a thing. <laughs> yeah, you see, this is why you use FedEx. Ah, so, there you go. This, yes. is what, this is what you're hinting at. How on earth are you going to fly home mm. with this beast? <laughs> some, of the, some of the paintwork on this is really, really nice. It's got the nice camouflage, yes. but if you look at that shoulder pad, you can just see they've worked a skull into the camouflage. Oh, yeah, yes. They've, yeah, they've basically really gone with the cool. sort of Adepticon scheme for the paint uh, yeah. paint job and stuff on this. Yeah. I think it looks great. Of you basically course, need to book another seat for it on the plane, I think, Justin. So, no, yeah. no, just I would say just bubble wrap the crap out of it and FedEx that bad boy home <laughs> is going to yeah, be your maybe. best bet. I, I would suggest you just get a child seat yeah, <laughs> and strap it in. <laughs> But um, other things that are going to be happening at, a, at Adepticon, one of the things that's definitely going to be happening right. is a huge pirate game, I hear. Yeah, yes. yeah. it's a 40-player participation game oh. named uh, A Fistful of Seamen. Right. <laughs> uh, basically, the way they're doing it is they're going to have a massive table that people can just drop in and play on. The entire map is interactive, so it's basically, think sandbox tabletop gaming, where you can just exactly. explore and do stuff as you want. That yes. does sound and then cool. the people that are running it, you know, there's there's one guy who's set to take care of the mine rooms. Ah, your sh your ship has landed on a, fors a forsaken shore with a temple of doom in the background. Things like awesome, that. Awesome, awesome stuff. Ben, what do you think of this? Yeah, I think it sounds fantastic. I love huge participation games, and this is sort of pushing it to like the nth degree. As Justin said, it's got that sort of role playing, almost storytelling element to it, which is just utterly yeah. insane. And you get and the face the Kraken. Yes. <laughs> With 40 people playing it as well, that's a lot of people in one place all having fun. Yeah. Um, it should be noted, there is also going to be sort of like a under-16s version of this going on at the same time. So if you're not into your rum and your weird jokes, uh, you can also play uh, that as well. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> it, looks, it looks absolutely fabulous. Yeah, I love this yeah. shot. Because it's, it's literally just, unfortunate vessel from Pirates of the Caribbean has met the Kraken. Pretty much, I yeah. really, really <laughs> love the, the disturbed water and stuff they've been doing around the bottom of that. Yeah, yeah, it's worked really, really well. Class well I mean, like, there stuff. is a video in this post, so if you want to find out a little bit more, just come across the Beast of War and actually just have a look at that video because it'll give you a good idea of what's going on for that yep. event. Yep. Awesome, awesome stuff. Right, also at Adepticon, mm. it'd be remiss of us not to mention it, is we've, we've packed up a few weeks back yeah. the Battle of Hoth table. Uh, 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 you're using the Royal Wii. <laughs> I packed up Hoth. I was cacking myself about it not fitting in the crate. I was worried that it wasn't going to go through American customs whenever I had to go and buy a different pallet box from what we had intended. I was nervous. It's on its way, so <laughs> here's hoping it makes it to you, Don and Gianna. It is, but Don and Gianna are probably not going to get access to it until, like, the Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's going to be a last minute. They're going get, to gonna get this massive pallet delivered and go... There you go, girls. Have right. fun. <laughs> Here's the thing. They might start pulling stuff out and go, it's a box of bits. We need to repair all of this in two hours. Why? I don't envy your task. <laughs> You're going to have the task of getting that up and running and the task of live blogging for yeah. four days. Although I will say I did make sure and send all the tokens, all of the measuring sticks, all of the snow speeders. I got all four ats in there. Everything's in the box, and hopefully it makes it there in one piece. We did Basically, what we're it. saying is that someone's going to have a lot of fun playing Hoth at Adepticon. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, yeah. <laughs> I, I do believe that the plan after Hoth is yeah. actually for it to begin making a touring circuit. You mean after Adepticon? It's after Adepticon. I believe it's making a tour of America. So it's going to tour some gaming stores in the future. Right. At least that's the hope. Right. Cool, cool, <laughs> cool stuff. Mm. We're going to take a quick break, and then 
We have Neil on the show from Spartan Games. All right, am I getting kicked out for this one? Am I not let in? No, it's just it's just going to be me and Neil all right. talking all about Halo Ground Command and the starter set that's coming up. Oh, it's exciting stuff. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Keep your blaster handy, the West is a dangerous place. Fight to survive as men turn to monsters and the dead rise on the Wild West Exodus Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Okay, so exciting stuff to talk about here. I'm with Neil Forsett from Spartan Games. Hey, how are you doing? And we're going to talk about Halo Ground Command. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes! People have been talking about this and wanting this. What are you delivering now? Well, it's a pretty good picture, isn't it, actually? I kind of like that one. It, nothing... it is some nice artwork you've got here. Yeah, um, well, the guys um, at 343, they sort of they gave us a kind of a, a bucket load of images and things, and that was one of the ones that they, uh, that they particularly liked, and we particularly like it, because it kind of captures the whole craziness of the game. Um, so what do we do? Well, it's basically a 15 mil scale um, uh, ground combat game um, set on um, Reach, yep. uh, initially set on Reach, uh, which follows on from our spaceship game, and basically it's infantry, Spartans, grunts, elites, tanks, flyers, it's the whole thing. So it's, it's everything you'd expect from a ground combat game in 15 mil. Awesome, because last year you were, doing the, you were doing the Halo Fleet battles. Yep. That's gone down a storm. Now we're going into the, oh, actually down on the planet surfaces to, to duke it out with the Covenant. Yeah, I think it was when we first started this. I mean, last year, it was very much we were sort of setting the scene. We were talking to everybody about what the plan was and how the relationship was going to grow with 343. Um, and, you know, back then we, we talked about the fact that we were doing a game. But the reality is now that we, we, you know, we, we've done the spaceships and we, we're expanding on the spaceships. We've got the classic era in the bag. We're moving on to the modern era very shortly. And, but this time... It's going back to the reach on the ground. So you, so everybody knows ground combat as Master Chief running around, or in that case, Noble Team on reach with yeah. you know that kind of that real kind of first person shooter thing. Whereas what, you know, what we're doing is kind of trying to fill in the back plot, kind of filling in the story behind the rest of the campaign, what was happening on the planet. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. We're, we are you know we're pretty thrilled by it. Yeah. So um, the first release then for Halo Ground Command is going to be a two-player battle box. Yeah, there's going to be that and some upgrades. Some, there'll be that and some upgrades immediately, and then there'll be a, there'll, we'll follow with waves of upgrades after yeah. that, kind of bringing on more and more and more. So basically, it's um, we we refer to them as kind of bite-sized chunks of upgrades in terms of people kind of focus and try and build the force they want. So if you are a UNSC player, you may well want to build, play troopers. Yeah. Or you may actually want to build an ODST drop pod force and, and kind of build an orbital shock troop and bring those guys in. And it, so that would be a kind of smaller, more elite force. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's um, it, we're trying to frame it in a way that um, the commanders can help people kind of build an army that's based on how they would kind of want to play their, their play style. Some people will want to have lots of armor, some people might want to have lots of infantry, or they may want to have more tactical kind of um, elite troops. So we'll see how we go. Okay, well we've got a stack of images to get through <laughs> showing off. You know, a good portion. Is that, of your, is that your cue for me to <coughs> shut up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just, yeah just, just let me get, let, let's move on. <laughs> no, we've got loads and loads of images to show you of, of what's going to be in the uh, in the two player battle box. But we have some actual models here, and I, I just want to bring them up so the viewers can yeah, can, get, can get a look at what what what, what we're looking at. So if I, I'm just going to bring up a couple of models here now. It's 15 mil. It's 15 mil. But I want I want you guys at home to see. There we go. 15 mil. Well, you know, everybody Actually, I mean, everybody in the game is used to shooting up those guys because they're basically, you know, they're, they're those poor grunts. Yeah. Here's an example of a grunt at 15 mil. Right? Now... No, this, sorry, this isn't the base, by the way. We, we've actually we painted them up, put them on a, on a single base. They are actually on um, a, like sort of a Sabo base in, you, yeah. in groups of three. We, which we'll see when we start bringing up the other images. <coughs> we also have a Warthog here. So yeah. We're bring in, so it's, everyone will start getting an example of it. 15 mil is actually a really good scale for this. Now a lot of people would have said twenty eight mil and stuff, but I'm gonna look I'm gonna say no, I'm actually coming around to the fifteen mil scale on this a lot. I think I mean to some extent people are used to seeing uh, it sounds like a crazy thing to say, but they're used to seeing the twenty eight mil when they play the game. Yeah. Because it, it is that kind of that that individual super soldier taking on um you know, a crazy amount of um elites and, and grunts getting well, blown away basically by these guys. In, uh, in armor, um, yeah. and and don't get me wrong, that is pretty evocative stuff, and it's very exciting. What's cool about this is that we're taking it. This is down to the to the trooper level. This yes. is this is the, you know, the the grunts of both sides 
kind of coming together in the mass battle. So yeah, fifty mil was um, is a is a, a good choice. We, well, we we loved the choice of, of scale when we when we discussed it with um, three for three industries, and because it allows us to. You know, get lots of war tugs on the table because you know even if you imagine now at twenty eight mil. Yeah, this here that, you, wouldn't, that, you wouldn't get too be, many of them. That'd be a pretty big model in twenty eight mil, and, and it is a big model in twenty eight mil. Uh, whereas you know in fifteen mil, you know you, people can have, you know the the, the chain gun versions. They can there's ones with um, you know kind of the uh, the laser on board and um, so gauss the, there's gauss missile and chain gun variants yeah. of them, and we're building all three. Plus, if we look at the image, <coughs> I'll bring the, I'll bring the image up. Yeah. <clears throat> it allows you to to go crazy with all sorts of big vehicles and stuff. Well, if you look at we'll that shot there, that. in that shot there, you've got obviously um, you know we've got warthogs, we've got uh, a scorpion in the background there, you've got the falcons up there, you've got banshee fighters on the covenant. Um, so we get to do that whole um, craziness of combat. Is everything you know? You can just imagine it all. You know, it's breaking. All hell is breaking loose yes. on the tabletop, and that's what we're, that's what we want. That we have it, to capture. It's that. released you to do a full on battle. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 that's um, and you know we're quite in, excited. In fact, I have an image here, and I'll just bring it up. Yeah. Okay. There's an image that kind of depicts the sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's one. That's my favorite. Well, one of my favorite images. We actually had that in the rule book. It's. I mean, this is. Um, well, no, it, just, it kind of gets my heart pounding when I look at that picture because you've got the Covenant War Machine coming and you've got, you know, the, there's this craziness of units. You've got um, un, unknown units there that are things that fans have probably seen, but they don't know what they are. You've got scarabs in the background. Yeah. Everybody's seen a scarab. And that, I mean, a 15 mil, a scarab is just a majestic thing to build. At 15 mil, it gives you the possibility of trying to recreate this, whereas 28 mil, it just would never happen. Yeah, it would be. Um, it would be. Well, you could do it, but I mean, you know, you would need a mansion. <laughs> well, people would have to. People would probably have to sell their kidney, you know, yeah. so, <laughs> or both, possibly both kidneys. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, it, it, I, I, I love. I love the excitement of that that image and genders. I mean, it's it's that craziness of warfare, and clearly that's just the covenant side of things. Um, but well, you know, hopefully we'll be able to yeah. get there with all of these models. <clears throat> Going back to the actual models here, yeah. now, <clears throat> these are the fifteen mils. Yep. Okay. Let me let me get it, bring it up. Now the camera isn't really capturing all the detail here, okay? So you actually brought some bigger uh, expanded versions of these actual mo of this actual yeah, model. For yeah, a start. Well, well, what I thought we, would would be helpful would be if my guys, because we build we work in a, in a digital world. I yeah. thought that if I, if one of my guys um, actually took the models and enlarged them, yes, then it would give you a fighting chance of of, of, of seeing it on the camera. So um, yeah, because yeah. because we can see the detail here, but you guys at home. Maybe not so, so well. So actually, I'm going to bring in one of these larger models. I'll just move that out of the way. <laughs> so what we're actually looking at here is this is a, a full-on representation, just increased in size of the of, little dude of this the small grunt here. Yeah. So I'm just going to give you guys all a, a view at home. Try not to spin it too fast, so you can get a an idea of the sort of detail levels that you can actually see when you get up close to the 15 mil stuff. And that's just awesome. Yeah, he's kind of cool, isn't he? Um, and when you when you suddenly sort of see him on a base where there's with, with two of his mates, yes, you know, and then and then you put six of those bases down together, and then you put an elite command stand attached to that, and then you add some hunters and some jackals, and and suddenly you've kind of got this fantastic fighting force. And then yes, you know, they, you do see these guys coming at you in droves in the game. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to kind of mimic and replicate. <coughs> okay, the perfect. Right, let's get in and let's start talking about the actual. Um, contents yep. of the two-player battle box. Yeah, but we are still locking down certain elements, so I will, I'll, I will tell you as much as I can to as to as tight okay. a level of, as I can. So, for a series of images here, will we start with the UNSC first? Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. Okay. Let's so let's see cool. what we're gonna straight in with. <laughs> straight in with a Spartan, of course. Yeah. Does, that, does anybody recognise that? Um, yeah. So um, there we got the guy. We got um, one with a laser, one with a rifle. Um, so basically. Um, you know, the, the, everybody loves Spartans. <laughs> you can't really, um, you can't really not enjoy a good Spartan. So these guys in the game, they are very, you know, they're great at combat. They're they're very deadly, um, but they're also they're there to basically um, to, to 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 basically enhance the troopers on the tabletop. Yes. So the infantry are there. They get a kick in the game from these guys being attached or with them. So they they basically give them a boost. 
Okay. And so, uh, what we started looking at here is actual contents. These, these are the renders of the contents that these will be are, in the these, these two-player These bot. are renders of, uh, of the actual models that were created for the two-player kit. Yeah, well, actually, for, uh, for, for all of the, for the yeah. they will, they'll be expanded, but yes, but in the, in the two-player set, yeah. Excellent. Cool. We, we move on and have a look at another set of models here. This is... <clears throat> this is actually the, what the commander, the radio guy, and the medic. Yep. So it's an officer. Yeah. So it's basically a UNSC um, trooper command stand. Um, I think I've probably put the uh, I've probably put the commander in the middle. I should put him in the middle, I guess. But there you guess you got the medic kneeling down there, uh, radio operator, and um, you know the, the kind of the flat capped um, kind of wearing officer. Um, and again, it's funny. I think it's really weird seeing them that large because it's sort of, you know, bearing in mind that they're one one hundred skills, so they are about seventeen mil tall. Yes, but but it's great to see them at this scale because you can get to see all the little details and stuff you've put out. I mean, yeah. I mean, if I lift this up, there is an amazing amount of detail on these little models. Yeah, it was. Um, well, we we had to basically start by building um, you know very high quality asset because you know the guys at um, at three for three are basically they're all about the, the quality of the image. Yes. So we so we work with um, with with game asset, and then our job is to take the game asset and make sure that um, it's it's we can manufacture it because it, some of the detail level is staggering that we get, and we have to finesse that down. So so with these models here, there's there's um. There's all, you know, well, there's a, he there's a heck of a lot of detail in them. There really um, is. <clears throat> I'm going to move us on, because there's a lot to get through in this. <laughs> now we're looking at um, the spotter and the sniper. Sniper team, yeah. So basically, um, yeah, um, well, what can I say? Man with a big gun and a guy who's lining up the shot with a big gun. Um, you can probably see on that one, you can see where one of the plugs goes into the base to, sort of, to fill in the third hole. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, um, they're fairly... Um, well, again, fairly detailed, good posing on them, we think, um, or we hope. And um, then so, they're, they're nasty in the game. The it, snipers it, are nasty. It is looking really good. I mean, I'm really excited about just the sheer variety of models we're going to get in this two in this two. Yeah, lots, box. lots, lots of poses, lots of, lots of, I mean, there's, there's lots of options there. I mean, I, I mean there's, there's, there's sort of images there that I haven't managed to bring you yet, but just, I think, have you got the missile guys? <coughs> we're we're going to get to oh, that. Okay, we're sounds like. <laughs> and continue on with some troopers. Yeah. So now we're into the more... I don't want to say vanilla troopers, but you know the more regular. Um, yeah, they're basically the, the the regular soldiers on the battlefield. Um, so we, you know, we kind of got the um, well, the UNSC troopers from from Reed. Uh, lots of poses, lots of styles on those ones. Was, I was sorry, consistent style, but lots yeah. of poses, as many as we can get. I mean, the, the idea being is to sort of try and make them all look uh, as individual as possible with the with the basing, because. You know, as the force grows, we just don't want to have it so that they all look the same. Yeah, and uh, you gave me some I images earlier to process now. I've done this, but I've even dropped some of the extra views and things of these guys. There's all sorts of different details. Now I'm going to move us on to the to the rocket launcher guys. They're eager to get there, so I am. Well, check yeah, these no, out. I like, well, I kind of like these guys. You know, sort of, um, you know, sort of, uh, again, you know, plenty of detail, nasty weaponry. Um, I love all the little details, like the wee visor and stuff on the helmet. Yeah, they're need, they're they're they're, they're needed because they, they the covenant have got those you know sort of banshees and things and um, phantom gunships, so it's it's kind of important for these guys to be able to shoot those down. And they're just awesome looking. I love all the packs and the details and stuff. You've done an excellent job on on, on getting all the yeah. details. Yeah, <coughs> um, it, it's 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 a, it's tricky. Yeah, <laughs> kind of left building that level of detail. Um, and again, you know, you have to give, you have to let some of the detail go because the, the models themselves are actually more detailed than that. Yeah, from the game assets. So it's, it's you know, we we've um, well, we've almost done our best to sort of to, to to make the guys at three for three happy and to make the customers happy when they get all of the models and go well, which is it's, it's a UNSC trooper. Yeah, and then to finish off the UNSCs <coughs> in the box, we have um, we have the Warthog. <laughs> Going to yeah. finish on a high note. We've got a Warthog with a Trooper and a Spartan on the gun. Yeah. Um, basically, we've, we've built... Um, uh, I, mean, I don't know how far you want to go into the rules mechanic, but the rules are... It, 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 the, the combat of the game itself is, a, is, is interesting because everybody's used to that kind of instant gratification of a video game. So this idea yes. that stuff dies and stuff is happening around you all the time. So when we took a look at the game... We we had to keep a game that was was easy to embrace and simple to play, but we had to kind of um, look at it and say how you know how do we make it so that everything this is a proper battle and you have no idea what's going to hit you next. So we built in a, um, our, our react 
system, which we, we, uh, which we think is a, a very good React system, but we would say that we wrote the rules. Uh, but we've got this kind of reaction system, which is got, it's almost like it's like pervasive overwatching as much as you, you, you never know what's going to hit you. So the idea being is you've got to be ready for everything because just because you've made, you know, even though it's a you go, I go system, yes. it's not a broken you go, I system. It's not, it's not um, if I go first, you die. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a good point. Maybe we should actually cover a little bit of of how the game plays, yeah. just just to touch. So you say it's a you-go-I-go go system. Is, yeah. it, is, it you, is it I go, I move all my stuff, and then you go, or is it I no, move you do it, you do it by, um, by, by formation, basically. So I, I will activate the formation, and you will activate the formation, and we'll basically move, and you move within the granularity of the formation. So I would, I would pick, a, pick a unit, yeah. do everything with it, and then but we will be alternating and oscillating between the two gameplay. But within the framework of that is that if I'm... Um, if I go to attack you, you can re you can attempt to react to me. But one of the important things with the react system is that pl potentially players of this game will not be, even though it's a war game and it's a proper war game because people will have to choose an army, build an army, paint an army, deploy it. It's it's so, it's, so there's nothing toy like and instant, but you know they are going to have to prepare a game. Yes, it was important to not. Um, um, Break those people in terms of a game. You're, you're not trying to force them to, to read a 250-page rule book because they're, they're not. They just they're not going to want to do that. They're going to yeah. want to play the game and, and, and get into it. So I think it's uh, we had to build an engine that where we kind of we add complexity, but we streamline that complexity out for them so they can benefit from it yes. but without having to sit there and do all of these um, overbearing calculations. So we should be able to play our way into the game. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and again, and, and the whole the whole starter set or the whole battle box is is built around the premise of you of, of getting people in, so they can kind of flow in through infantry. They, then they'll have a little bit of armor. Then they can start adding more armor. They can start adding aerial, and then you kind of get this sort of fascinating kind of interchange between all the all the player styles coming in because it, it's sort of you. And, and again, you it sort of learn how to kill each other with infantry. Yeah. And then then I would decimate each other with your flyers. <laughs> well, yes, I can't. I can't wait to get to flyers and stuff in in the future. But um, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, uh, the, I mean the, the 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 underlying premise is is, is very much this React engine, and it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a record keeping list system. It's designed and it's also based on you know what's happening to your unit and how well your unit's doing on the bat on the tabletop. Because if you've been in a firefight and you've been shot to pieces, you're not going to be reacting as well as you did before you were shot to pieces sort of yeah. thing. And that's where things like Spartans and Elites come in because they, they again, they can buff those units and make them better to react. So, you know, you came in, you imagine the mental image, you've got the unit in the middle of the table, the Covenant have hammered it, and so these poor Marines are in a kind of a broken down building and there's three or four bases, they've got disorder tokens. And then suddenly a Spartan appears from nowhere, he kind of emerges out the dust or the fog, you know, and then all of a sudden the Marines are kind of like, they suddenly think they can take everybody on again. Yes. And that's the whole, that's what we're trying to kind of capture with the gameplay, is that it's, these guys are not just one-man killing machines, which we all know they are. Yes, it's that epic moment where the Spartan turns up, and everybody gets up behind him, prone, yeah, they, and they ready to go. Chest out again and they kind Spartans of, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. let's do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, while this is up on the screen, so we've got yeah. the Warthog, I'll just show you that again. So that's... That's the representation of the version that will be in. Yeah, in the, in the, the starter set, box. in the starter set is the um, is the chain gun variant. Yeah, but here uh. in the studio, we, I'm just going to show off the one we have in the studio here, so you can get an idea of what that's actual like in the flesh. Different gun on this. Missiles on that one. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's still a good example of what what the actual warthog will look like, and I'll, I'll bring in a <coughs> grunt for a bit of scale there. Awesome stuff, right? Now, before we move on to the to the Covenant side of things, we have actually some more large, oh, okay. large miniatures. So if, if I just go back to, uh, not them, these guys here, we have a representation of what the trooper. of what the troopers might actually, well, we have a representation showing off all the details and stuff. So here you go. This is what, this is actually the amount of details that are on those trooper models. Yeah, that's the 15 mil guy. So he's basically, um, again, the beauty of digital is that we can take yeah. the asset and just enlarge it. So he's probably about a three up, I guess, something like that. I guess yeah, he'd be like a, a, like a three up, but that's just so the cameras and stuff can pick up all the little details that we can see, but it would just be hard to get on camera. Perfect. Really, really cool stuff there, Neil. Thank you. Right. Let's move on. Let's do the, let's start looking through the, the aliens. Let's, side let's, of let's go alien. So that's a good roundup of, of the UNSC who are going to be facing off against the Covenant, right? So. Yeah, I mean, just to recap, you've got you know, basically you have you've got the scorpions in the box. You've got um, you have marine troopers, marine command, uh, marine snipers, 
uh, marine missile launchers. Um, there's a HMG team in there. Yeah. Um, so you basically see so you kind of have your standard military asset base, which yep. is what the starter set builds around. Is there going to be scorpions? Not in the starter set, but there are scorpion tanks as an upgrade option. Basically, armor is one of those things whereby it will be uh, it'll be up to the player uh, in, in the direction the player wants to take their force. So if they yeah. want to start adding lots of armor, some people like tanks, but you know you have to remember that the scorpion tank is is a is a is a huge tank. It's a big beast. Even though it's designated as a medium, it's actually it's a, it's probably on about a base that is about. Well, it's, I mean, people don't have to put them on base if they want, but it's about 110 by about 80 mil in terms of um, floor standing space. It's it's uh, it's a beastie. Big one, right? So <coughs> covenant then. Covenant, yes. Right. Well, will we start with we start with grunts and work our way up, will we? <laughs> well, we've seen the grunts there, so let's let's go for it. Well, I think uh, grunts is appropriate because that, if you're playing a Halo game, you know, you start. You well, you start everybody, shooting everybody grunts used to see them running around, kind of squeaking at yes. them, like that. Yeah, kind of like yeah. So. so, so here we are, grunts. This is. <coughs> yep, so the base of grunts. Um, yeah, Couple and of views. They get basically shot to pieces, um, and uh, they have, you know the usual thing. You've got um, you got the ones that run along and blow themselves up as well. Yeah, which we have here. These are the these are the hilarious ones that try to take you out, but never quite do it in the game. No, but no. They, they are they going to be a little bit more deadly in the actual war game? Um, well, if you don't shoot them before they get into you and they manage to explode, then it's going to hurt. So, you know, it, let's, let's say it'll sting. Yeah, so I want to get on my Warthog and shoot these guys down as they're You basically want to, you want to get the guy behind there on the chain gun. You want to mow them down. Yeah. Um, or even run them over, actually, if you want. Oh, can you run them over like in the game? You can. Oh, oh, oh this has to be demonstrated. <laughs> so, literally just drive over them. You can actually mow into the units, um, <laughs> and there are, there are, there, we, because um, on the Covenant side, which we'll get to in a second, I hope, yeah. is um, there are units in there that are designed to plow their way through other units. So it's there's a there's a it's it's a, it's a shooting game. It's a shooty shooty game. You know, let's first of all, this is yeah. all about you know. However, there is a strong element of melee in there as well. So there is this idea of units slamming into each other and basically in close combat. What about what about Spartans? Can Spartans like slam into units and things like this? They can. So. Recently, Halo 5 came out, right? Yeah. And there's that bit in the intro where the Spartans are really in close, beating stuff. Yeah. Have we got a bit of that in this, then? Uh, do you know, it's an interesting dialogue to get into about whether we sort of, um, how far do we go with the, with the super soldier approach, because, you know, these, these guys are designed to take down the entire forces. Um, you could play a game where, uh, where you could have a lot of you of the Covenant and I could have, you know, six Spartans and I'd probably still beat you. <laughs> um, um, we just, you know, you people will want to be able to do that sort of thing, and then and they will be able to. However, the premise of the game is to not have you running around with these super soldiers destroying your opponent. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do it all the time, but it would be nice to have the odd little epic moment. Um, well, we are, uh, we're hoping that one of the box sets that we'll, bring, we'll be bringing out um, it will be the characters from Reach, so the, the what they call Noble Team. Yes. Uh, which is some pretty cool characters, and so we are, we we are very much hoping that um, within two or three releases of the box set, we'll have Noble Team available. There will be Spartans and all of their various guises because because um, we, we've got them operating in the game in exciting ways with with missions and aerial stuff and um, how because you, you you start the game with a Spartan with a laser, but during the course of the game you could perhaps um, bring a Pelican in and do a a weapon drop and change him up to a missile launcher yeah. or a laser. So you could you can. Um, they're going, there are going to be Spartans, but again, they're, they're designed there to buff the troops as opposed to. I mean, don't get me wrong. That you know, if if, if a Spartan jumps on the back of a warthog, it's going to. I don't know. I pointed at the screen. It's not there. But if he, <laughs> <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> but if he, uh, but if he basically, if he's on the back of there, they, it, that's going to. Uh, he's going to react incredibly well. And, and warthogs, you know, they react very well in the game as it is because that's their whole idea with their three sixty traverse and these yes. kind of gun mowing things down. Um, so. And again, and you know that's quite they're quite handy to have on the table for when suddenly your your, your units there and a hunter comes around the corner and and you think oh well, I'm going to have to react with those with those chain guns to try and take those big hideous things down. Yes, there's hunters and we're going to get to them. <laughs> right, let's let's go back. We couldn't, we couldn't make a covenant no, fast without hunters. Let's uh, let's go back to look at the covenant. So we've done we've done the grunts. Yeah. Let's uh, let's start with getting into the elites. Okay. So here we have an elite with the, the energy sword and a couple of grunts behind yeah, that's them. Yeah, that's the command stand. So that's basically uh, you. You again. You you put one. You can attach one of those to a, to a standard unit of uh, grunt bases to basically make them better, react better. And of course, in the game, you start to see the grunts being quite prey of quite brave when there's an elite there. Yes. When the elite gets toasted, they tend to go a little bit much the same as the humans in their reactions to their Spartans. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, bravery is an interesting one because in in the game they're all they're all brave. You know, it's yeah. sci-fi and it's futuristic. They're all brave anyway. But I think you have to have that kind of a demor demoralizing effect that can occur in a game. And I think that that's where the things like the the commanders and the elites and uh, the elite majors and and um, uh, it all comes into the gameplay. Yeah. Well, we have some more pictures. So there's a few different types of elite, or at least poses of elite in the in the box. <coughs> yeah, you can you can actually have bases of elites as you got them in pairs, and they they tend to operate on pairs in the base because they're pretty powerful guys. They're big. They're big dudes. You know, they're not they're not small. They're awesome looking too. They are quite menacing, aren't they? I love all the details around their 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 jaws. They've got that predator style sort of mouth thing going on. Yeah, I mean those are obviously simplifications of the of the actual. Um, the ones themselves, because in, you know, in the actual, they, they are a very, very complicated mouth structure. Yeah, and and again, you brought a a, a, a large, mean, a version. large version of this to show off. Yep. The the details. So and this, this again is a representation of the fifteen mil model. Yeah, he's, built, he's he, yeah, he's basically he's just he's that so that is yeah that's that's the three D model. Awesome, really really cool stuff. You see, it's fun when you got a when you got a nice big rapid prototyping machine sitting in the corner. The guys just go wild with it. <laughs> yeah, they're going to use it, aren't they? Oh yeah, they're going to. Let have me fun just tell them back now. You can see the the sort of the manacles. Would they be manacles? The mouthpiece? Um, I don't know. Mandibles, I guess. Mandibles. I, I, that's I, actually, the word. I don't actually know. I mean, I, I, Microsoft have, might, may have their own terminology for it: jaw, mandibles, teeth, nasty things, <laughs> stuff that would make it difficult to drink a pint of Guinness. Yeah, awesome stuff. And then you can see we're working our way up. From like grunts to elites, we're we're working our way up to <laughs> up to hunters here. Then, so there's going to be hunters in the actual two-player battle box. Then. Yep. Yeah, they count as armored units in the game because they are, you know, they're big and they're tough. They're about a 40, 45 mil tall, I believe, when they stand up upright. So even at fifteen mil, they are pretty sizable boys. Again, um, loads and loads of details. Oh yeah, I mean right the way down to you know I mean if you look at those uh, the studs on the shields I mean one of the you know when we when we did the original asset for three for three we got the studs wrong yeah bear in mind that's just, that's a tiny figure yeah, it's so, yeah. so we got the we, we got these the little little, studs, yeah. little dots on the shields you were getting some some feedback on we, ah, not quite right I think we did um, if memory serves me the model maker inverted them yeah okay that's wrong <laughs> they're not over they 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 come out not in. But the interesting point then, if I go back to this, this image here is on the <clears throat> on one side you can see the hunter in, a, in his pose that he <coughs> usually takes when he's going to shoot his big laser. Yep. Right. But on the other other side of the screen, he's in a pose where you're saying yeah, that's what we uh, we we were in the game. We refer to that as rampage. And yeah. The, the, so the idea being is that uh, he can slam into a unit um, of of marines. I'm sorry, troopers. Um, and he can, or, or he can engage a Spartan if he wants. I mean, and and the, the idea being is that he's he, as he hits it, he kind of crunches the unit, and there's a pretty good chance he's going to win the combat. And if he gets to win the combat, he gets to to create like a, a rampage effect on that unit and gets to try and almost it, it kind of you almost imagine him at running at full pelt. Yes. And then he hits them, and then just keeps going, and 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 it's that sort of action is just basically going to kind of like terminate more of them. Yeah. Um, so and, I mean, and, you know, he may want to go through that unit to get to another unit. It's another good. It's another good way of bringing the video game to the tabletop. Because if anybody's played the video game, there's this point where the hunters are shooting at you, but there is this point where they just they just go for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's very important to try and mimic that style of play yeah, because you know we have to um, we have to you know it's not it, it's not just paying homage to the game. We have to be accurate to it. Yeah. And and it's interesting because you know it opens up I mean, as we had as we had with the spaceships it opens up a whole dialogue with three for three about how these things fight and why they fight and how they fight and and how they engage and it's and you know it's it'll be inter it's well we we think it's interesting for fans to be able to see a bit more flesh on the bone of the kind of the military hardware the combat you know because everybody knows how a Spartan fights but you know how do the troopers behind him fight and it's quite you know, it's pretty exciting. Okay, <clears throat> now that that's taken us through the images that I have here currently. Yeah. But there's there there is some models that we don't yet have actual yeah, images <coughs> for because you're still working on getting them signed off and things like this. Yeah, there's stuff that we're still working on. We're still working on a little bit of the asset, and some of these are ref uh, are reflected in terms of the upgrades that are coming for the starter set um, for, the, for that. So. Um, what have we, what can... have we seen? What have we not seen that is in the two pair battle box? Uh, well, you haven't seen the ghost. Okay. And you haven't seen the um, jackals. Yep. Um, I don't think you've seen them. You haven't seen the HMG teams. You haven't seen the buildings. The, oh. scene, the buildings. 
Buildings, you're doing buildings as well. Yeah, there's, couple, awesome. there's going to be a couple of buildings in the box set just to kind of to kick people's collection off to get them playing. You know, somewhere to hide, somewhere to garrison your troops to kind of try and get them out of the way of enemy fire. Yeah, and with it being based on Reach, they, they've taken on that UNSC style that they had yes, on Reach. So, and I, yeah. I, we, have, we have some... We have an image from one of the, from one of the games here that that represents the style the buildings will be. Yeah, anybody on. from anybody familiar with the game? That, that's close to Sword Base, um, so that is um, you know that's very much the kind of the architecture of the of the, of the base. And I mean, there's a lot more um, larger kind of more detailed buildings on there as well. But some of them are quite large bunkers, and we will be making some of the larger bunkers. Yeah. Um, but you know, but to start off with, you know, a couple of uh, couple of bunker style things. I, I see like a, a gun thing just down. Oh, that's a scythe, yeah. That's, that's, that's Is there going to be like gun placements and stuff? You'll be able to buy that because obviously, you know, when, if, if so let's say you were playing a Covenant and you yeah. bought, and you, and you bought um, three Banshee fighters, um, and, I, and I got my guys with my missiles, which is great. But actually, you want a scythe because the scythe is, it will, will, is designed to take those bad boys down. Whereas on the on the Covenant side of things, they've got a they've got a whole range of weapon systems. I mean, they have, they have some of their big guns are like this big. You know, yeah. they're designed to shoot spaceships. Though, I mean, we were thinking that that would be an awesome model to make for um, well, for scenarios. You know, they kind of they're almost like a imagine an ODST team kind of dropping in and their thing is to take out the gun platform. It's that sort of gameplay. I mean, there, there will be the, um, the, 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 the tournament style where you peel our armies and we, we fight each other out, yes. but there, there's also going to be a strong narrative side of things because it's important for us to kind of take people on that journey of the game because we're on that journey with 343 and it's, I think it's important to kind of to feed that to the, to the gamer. <clears throat> well, we're going to talk a little bit more about where the, where the game's going to go, but uh, in terms of the um, two-player battle box... Yep. When are we actually going to be able to get our hands on it? When, when is the when's it releasing? <coughs> well, we'll have it at Salute. Yeah. Um, and um, we will be releasing later this year, I would say, at the very latest end of July. Okay. It should be, it'll be June, June July is that, sorry, July, August is our time frame for it. Um, and people will start to be able to pre order it from around about Salute. Oh yes, um, you've, been made, you've made us wait forever for this. Yeah, so well, you know, we've, it's uh, it's one of those kind of bizarre projects whereby you're, you know, we 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 are so full on with the spaceships. Yes, and, you know, and kind of you know we're kind of working people through the classic Halo spaceships, and we're we're starting to move towards the kind of the modern era with uh, with the with the new spaceships in Halo <laughs> Five. Um, you know, we still got Infinity to come for the spaceship game, and. Um, and the, the land, the ground game, kind of has to track along that. So we've been. Um, it's 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 also something we can't rush. You know, we have to get this. We have to get this spot on. Yeah. Because this is all canonically accurate to what to what the guys at three for three want. So we have to be. Um, well, as, when you, as you mentioned accurate, for example, right? If I bring up a bring up this picture here, we don't have a picture of <clears throat> the actual ghost from the the two player starter set. But for anybody who hasn't played Halo. You know, this is what it looks like. Yeah, so basically, fortunately, the, the good news for us as model makers is that um, basically what happens is the guys at 343 will, um, they, they will give us the asset. So that image that's on, that you've just shown on the screen there, that came from a three-dimensional model that was, in the, it was actually in the Reach game. So they, they gave us the model, and then what we have to do is, is process that data to make yes. it castable. Yeah, because, of, the, because it's a video game model. A lot of the details that you're seeing there don't actually exist because they're like in images and maps and it's things over, like that. It's over. It's it's bitmaps. It's overlays. <laughs> yeah. So what we have to do is uh, is is work out what we what we can keep and what we can cast. Because uh, sometimes the detail level is so fine, it just it's ridiculous. You, yeah. you, you, you're looking at something that's a quarter of a mil. Well, we could you know we could we could wrap your prototype it, and we could fabricate it. But then you put a layer of paint over the top of it, and it's gone. Yeah. So it's it's working. It's all we we have, we have to look at that asset and then work out what stays and what goes because it sort of some of it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. But but it's awesome that you get those assets. For example, if I bring up, wait for it, wait uh, for it. Okay. Oh, the <laughs> pelican. Oh, the pelican you, yeah. You've got the game asset. So that, you, is, that is the game asset pelican. Yeah. yeah. And that's and then that is the model that we built our model from. Now you said the model you built your model from. Yes. That means, yes, there will be pelicans in the game. In fact, even better than that, I have a representation of just how big a pelican will be in the game. Let me, <laughs> let me, just, let me just move a few items out of the way so you guys at home can, can get a grasp of this. And again, this is, the, this is one of the great things of, of being at the, at the scale that you're working at, is you can actually build a two-scale pelican. 
that's yeah, going to be able to carry I, I, tanks I, I, and warthogs. I, but yeah, and I brought that because it was. Um, it was. Uh, I think I wanted. You know, it's. I mean, if I, if I just set that in there, you can start to see. <coughs> well, that thing hang. That you can actually hang that in the, in, in the at the back and in the game. Um, you, you you see these things coming in and actually dropping warthogs and yes. dropping infantry, but also dropping um, scorpion tanks as well. Yeah, so it, it'll fly into the battlefield. <sighs> Drop it off. Well, you perform you, you perform aerial missions in the game. So the idea being is that um, you can. Um, yeah. Some of this is still being fine tuned by the by we're, the test team as well. So. We're we're moving on past the two player battle box at the minute. Um, just before we do move yeah, on too far, now you've mentioned mentioned test teams and stuff. Yeah. I believe you're, you're you're still play testing to find out what the actual balance will be for the contents of the battle box. Yes. Yeah. We know what the you know what the contents will be in terms of models. Yeah. Now you're balancing the amount of models of each thing. It's things like in the final testing is it, it's whether it's two sniper teams or three sniper teams. It's whether yeah. it's whether it's two you know it's sort of you know three ghosts or four ghosts. It's that sort of like uh, making sure that we don't break the playability. So the guys are um, the guys are off. Beating each other's heads in on, on rolling dice and kind of moving um, the units around the table to make sure that they're kind of content and happy with that. And it's things like making sure that the aerial stuff um, behaves exactly as it's supposed to behave in the game, because it's um, you know that's an awesome model. I mean, uh, you know, a pelican is fantastic, and I, you know, and I, you know, uh, I'm, you guys I'm, obviously have this moved on past this this template. I, I have we that. Just, we just can't I, show it or can see it yet, can we? No, it's just one of those models that's been signed off. So it's sort of because it's we, because we take that model and then yeah. we then we have to basically create that model. Um, so you guys, you guys again got this model, which gave you all the correct dimensions. But again, oh yeah, we, we lacked we, any surface detail, so you're building in all that new surface detail and stuff. Oh, we're, we're we're millimeter accurate. We you know we're half a millimeter accurate on these yeah. things. You know, I mean, as we were with the spaceships, the spaceships are canonically accurate to, to what the guys did, and these half have got to be the same. You know, like on the Scorpion, I'm sorry, on the, on the Warthog there, that's got to have the same dashboard. Dashboard. Let me have a look. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, so it's sort of, it's getting it all the dimensions right and. Um, you know, when you make, when you manufacture, you have to take um, sort of. Um, I was going to use the word liberties, but but you know, you're, you're trying to you're you're you've got to make things that you can produce them. Yes. And then people are going to be able to paint them. So it's very important for us to to be as accurate as possible with that. So without changing the overall aesthetic of something that belongs to three four three. Which is cool. Uh, I'm going to bring up this next image here. <clears throat> Which is what are we looking at here now? That's a wraith. That is a that is a wraith tank. Yeah. So basically, it's it's uh, it's like a, um, a a mobile artillery platform of things. So basically, it kind of it deploys its weapon systems out the back, and it starts hurling ordnance across the table and trying to sort of like, uh, well, basically take out and destroy other tanks. So, so that so that would that would be the natural enemy of the Scorpion tank for the UNSC. Yeah. So we so we deploy that. So, so once we get this two pair battle box, yep, expansions like the Wraith tank and the Scorpion and the Pelican and stuff, far yeah. behind. Oh no, very quick. Very quick. Very, 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 <laughs> very quick. Um, I think the, our plan is to uh, sort of do like a, a three-phase implementation. And again, some of these things can change because obviously when, you, when, we're, when we're talking to, to 343, when we, when there's a planning process goes in. The way that we come at this is infantry. So it's yeah. very much about um, the first box, infantry, get your, get your troopers on the table, get your elites and your grunts. A little bit of armour, small armour, so things like ghosts and warthogs. And then basically you then start letting people choose between I want to add prowlers, I want to add wraiths, I want to add um, uh, um, sort of wolverines, I want to add um, more and more of these kind of things. Uh, and then after that you add the aerial side of things. So, yeah. so you, and you basically we let people roll into um, the expansion of the game as to how they, how they want to do it. Um, and it's one of those things where... Um, you know, we're not going to force people to suddenly say, in order to play this game, you must own 10 tanks. Yeah. It's, it's not like that. If somebody wants to play an armoured bias game, have fun. I'm a great believer in that once somebody owns a box set, it's, it's their game. Yes. You know, I, I, I'm, nobody should dictate to them what they should and shouldn't play. You should make it available to them to play. Um, <clears throat> what's, what sort of size are we looking at, Wraith Tank? I mean, if you just... um, probably around about... That sort of size, so I mean, it's sort of it's kind of bigger than it's. So if that's that, then the wraith is probably coming in about that compared to that. Yeah, scorpion's bigger. Yeah, 
Scorpion's big. It's kind. Of, it's almost like it's all, it's almost square. Scorpion's a stupidly big tank, isn't it? Because for a medium tank, yeah, there's a bigger one than that as well, actually. Yeah. Called a grizzly. I didn't even know there was another one. Up yeah. To um, but this this brings us to another thing of models and where can it go? I mean, how far can you go with this this Halo range in terms of of model size? Because there is a lot of big models and stuff in in the likes of the video games. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, there's an element of what will the guys at three? For, I, I suppose. Okay. Here's the one. How crazy will they let me go? And that's what it will boil down to. Because I, you know, I love toys, so I will want to make How it. How crazy all. do you want to be? <laughs> um, well, I want to make. Um, well, that's a good question. Um, I'm definitely. Well, I, I will cry if I don't bring scarabs out. Oh my gosh! You know, and and you know that's gonna, probably going to be around about. Well, oh. footprint of that, really, probably something along those do, lines. If anybody know what we're talking about, I'll bring up an image of it here. Do you see? Just in the cloud, so you can't really see. I'll point. You see, just back here. That's a scarab. We're talking about this. Let me bring that up. See the legs just peeking out over the clouds of the dust. Well, if you look at that picture, that's not even the big one. That isn't even the biggest thing there. You know, you, you know, you've got the kind of uh, you got the, the big one in the middle. I mean, you know, I, I I I I love that image. That's one of those things where I remember when I saw that image. It was. I mean, I got it. I was I was doing the um, the layout of the, of the, the spaceship book. Yeah. And I got a bunch of digital asset came over, and I just looked at that picture, and I was like, "That's it. It's just, that's so. That was. That, I was hooked. That was. That's you know. That for six, a good six months, that was my desktop wallpaper, my laptop, and um, it was. Uh, you know, that's what I kind of want to create. But obviously, you know, it, it's okay having these crazy ideas that that's what I want. That I want to build. And that's what I want people to game. But you can't yeah. make people game that because that's not. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean. You know, it's like I want everybody to own a pelican. Of course, it would be amazing if everybody bought pelicans. But the reality is, is that you know that is for some people that is a potentially OTT yeah, thing so, to own. Oh, you know, there we no go. Sorry enough, about that. There I, we I go. keep I keep moving it. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it's. I mean, that you know, that's I don't know. I want to own one of these. I want well, one of these. You're going to want more than that when you see it because it's it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool kit. You know, um, it, it really is beautiful. Um, you know, um, Chris Peace is my um, the model maker who's been working on that project and. Uh, I mean, the, the the Covenant have got one bigger than that. They've got they've got the the Phantom gunship. It's about an inch and a half bigger. Oh. Um, and you know, I'd recommend anybody go and Google it now. Um, you know, Halo Halo Reach Phantom. Um, yeah. And I, in, in anticipation, of, well, in, in answering your question, but where does it go? Well, you know, we're still in classic era here. You know, we've got a, an awful lot of models that we can make in classic era. Yeah, because that that brings uh, us to another point. I mean, <clears throat> you're in Halo. Reach basically still, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> I, I take it as the game goes. Then so we we get the two player battle box. Yeah, we get expansions and things that we can buy. Yeah. How does the game, if you know, how does the game progress from here? Does that mean? Do you mean in, in terms of what how Halo progresses and? Uh, well, how do how you get... progress? Because you're still at you're still at Halo Reach, whereas Halo is at, moving on to Halo Six. Yeah, are you guys going to be? Playing catch up through the Halo universe, or how does it work? I very much hope so. I think I think you know in all of the conversations that we have with those guys is that uh, three for three is that you know we are classic. Um, you know, we have got um, modern asset. You know, I mean, if you look, uh, uh, my best example is to probably jump back to my spaceships again. Is that we started at Reach and we're starting to expand on that range. Yeah. And then the next, uh, once we've got those, so basically with those we've got um, Mac platforms and the Valiant Super Heavy um, Cruiser. All of those good good spaceships we built and the, you know, the, the, the heavy destroyers and all that. And then, we, then we start, we're starting to move into, uh, well actually the next thing after the spaceships will be the, the fighters that we've done. And then from the fighters we'll move on to the H5, or not H5, but the, the modern era, to so Infinity. Yes. Um, and all of that, all of that new stuff. And then, if anybody who's seen the Halo Five um, video game at the very beginning, there's a whole load of spaceships that are shown. Well, fortunately for us, we're getting to build those spaceships. Oh, nice! Is, so we've got things like you know the Brigantine, um, and, um, and there's one called the Man of War. So there's a whole, there's a, there's a, a, a bunch of new ships. Or, or, well, actually, they're technically old ships for the Covenant, yeah. but they're new ships to, to fans. We get to build those. So that's, but that game will will track into the modern era. And then eventually, hopefully, uh, we will get onto things like the Guardians. Yes. You know, and I mean, and, so uh, the same for Halo Ground Com or Ground uh, Command. Then. Well, it, it, I mean, uh, I can't pre-announce what, what what we're going to do, but hopefully, it, that that what my what I would envisage would be yeah. that we would go from classic Reach era through to more modern. Yeah. Through to 
tracking where the game goes because obviously Halo is a is an exciting franchise. It's a, and and um, and and three for three are continually expanding that now. Yeah, and it would be fantastic to to stay part of that and just track. So if it's if it's moving there, and we're sort of tracking in behind, eventually. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we'll ever catch you up, but we'll we'll we will move through the timeline with them. That that will be um, that will be most which exciting. Kinda, which is kind of cool because even for people who've played the video game, yep, it's kind of cool to play through that history. If it, you know, if it kind of goes like that, yeah, it will be fine. I mean, I think it's sort of. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, again, ne- next year there will be uh, you know we 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 have a, we have a rollout plan for this. Yeah. Armor, more infantry, different types, you know, ODST drop troops, uh, different elites, different units. Um, there'll be more and more of that stuff coming out, um, more vehicles. Uh, then we get into them, you know, there's, there's, there's stuff afoot that I can't even talk about. Or if I did talk about it, I'm sure that somebody would come and shoot me. But I need a crowbar in here. Yeah, <laughs> you can't wedge in there, it's, it's, it's locked down. Um, and... Um, and you know, being able to track into that is is incredibly exciting. But and again, if you just look at Halo Five, you know, we we saw things like the Wraith, yes, and we've seen things like and and, and if people look at you know, there's Pelicans, and if you look at um, things like the um, Phantom Gunship, the H Five version of that is different. It's a it's a different it's a different stylization. So those models will all hopefully become things we can build as as future upgrades. So that. You know, a Pelican at Reach, and then there's a Pelican at H5. There's, you know, you've got the H4 generation stuff. Then, uh, and again, the same goes with um, things like a Phantom. Is that you know the what the the Phantom at Reach looks very different to the Phantom in H5. And yes. well, of course, for players and gamers, they can collect all of those models. So there's just this whole multitude of these things that we can tap into and, and hopefully make for the for the game and just keep it going, so they can kind of come on a journey. It, it's a very very exciting. I mean, it's just it's um. Yeah, you know, pinch yourself for a uh, moment. Absolutely awesome, Neil. Thank you very much for coming in and giving us an update on the um, the grind game. Uh, I can't wait until it comes out. No, when, when when was that? You were saying it might be out around again. Uh, I would recommend everybody come to salute. Oh, there you hear. You've heard it. Come to salute. Well, I'm come, going to salute. I know where I'm going. <laughs> well, I tell you, you come to salute and you uh, and come and see me on the stand, and you can come and pick up uh, the limited edition models <gasps> that we're going to have at salute. Neil, thank you very much for coming on the show and Pleasure. giving us an update on that. Fantastic stuff. Thanks, guys. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of Warhub. Take command of elves, dwarves, and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on beastsofwar.com. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsung Hub on beastsofwar.com. Excellent, fascinating stuff there. Halo Ground Command, mm-hmm. looking really cool. Can't yeah. wait to get my hands on that set. <laughs> it, it's nice to see they've done the warthogs in the game. To actually have those on the tabletop is going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and when they get the likes of the big pelican and stuff like, ooh! <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw the silhouette he brought along for that. That it, This is a 15 mil game, yeah? Is it? What? Yeah. <laughs> this is a bit, what it, looks, it looks like a 28 mil miniature yeah, yeah, sort of yeah. size thing, but it's awesome. That's why I guess that's why they've done it at 15 mil. Yeah. Anyway, if you've been enjoying that, next, next, I was going to say next, in the next show tomorrow, I- we're actually talking to um, Neil again about Halo Fleet Battles and the new releases and and something that he is going to let slip in the show. So if you're into Halo Fleet Battles, you definitely, definitely want to watch The Weekender tomorrow. You are such a tease. <laughs> I am such a tease. All right, well, guys, I'm going to help you out with this. If you're not a backstager, come across, make a free account. We have a seven-day free trial for backstage. So if you're curious, you can find out. Right, Jono. Yes. I've brought you onto the show. Enough of that sci-fi rubbish. It's either, <laughs> it's either going to be tanks or World War II stuff we're going to talk about. It certainly is World War II stuff. It certainly is. Look at this. Ah. We have two new books for Flames of War, Gung Ho and Banzai. Right. Uh, this is Pacific War, Flames of War. Mm. Apparently this is a big deal now. Yes. Flames of War going into the Pacific and a lot of people have been waiting for this and they're they really excited and eager to get stuck in. Definitely. And... The nice thing about this is it's two separate books. Right. Usually, a th- usually a campaign or a theatre book is one big book, right. and it has all the forces for your your opposing forces in one book. Ah. So they've split it down in this case into Gung Ho, 
for the U.S. Marine Corps, yeah. and Banzai for the Imperial Japanese. The artwork on these two boats is really beautiful. Isn't it? Do you yeah, want to get a, got, you want get a shot of those? Here? Yeah? Look at that. That's isn't that really nice, isn't it? Yep, it's very thematic. This is like something straight out of the Pacific HBO series. Aye, yeah. With the landing craft heading towards an island and everything's kicking off in there. <laughs> <laughs> what I like is the stark contrast in colours between this. Yes. And very Aye. different looking books. It's very different and I think that's definitely, certainly a play on the forces that each book contains mm. because the US is the US Marine Corps, this is the US Navy's military arm, uh, while Banzai is in the jungle mm. fighting the Japanese and everything sort of guerrilla tactics and big infantry moves and all mm. that sort of stuff through very heavily wooded areas. So yeah. it's definitely a nice choice of artwork. So John, we've got, these, we've got these books a little early. Yes. Right? We have what is it? It's the 9th of April, I believe. The 9th of April mm -hmm. is what uh, is, the, is the actual street day for these, the release okay. date. Yeah. Okay. So you've had a little bit of a chance to have a look through them. Yes. Do you want to get a stock in and, and which book do you want to start with? Um, I'm going to start with Banzai okay. because Gung Ho has a lot of nice stuff in there that I want to talk about <laughs> in a minute or two. Um, so Banzai is basically your Imperial Japanese forces from, let's say, when the whole thing kicked off. Yeah, And you can help. see the, the Japanese Empire at its height, essentially. Mm. You can see the amount of area they took. I mean, there's Manchuria in there, Korea's in there. And all those areas. This oh, is they actually made a fair push into China. Yeah, they they really did. Uh, at the end of the war, of course, Russia came along and said, "Nope, don't do that. We want China." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this covers everything from Japan just after Pearl Harbor, when everything is expanding and the Japanese Navy is basically the most powerful force in the Pacific. Yeah, um, and it starts with the likes of the Battle for Guadalcanal, mm. where that's the first time the U.S. Marine Corps come in and start to try and beat the Japanese and at that yes. point the Japanese were highly professional, highly motivated, they knew exactly what they were doing, they had an excellent air force, excellent navy yeah. and there's a lot of, I hate calling it fluff, historical background yeah. uh, of all the different uh, forces. Mm -hmm. So you have like Japan's final defeat, Okinawa, the mainland islands, Iwo Jima mm -hmm. which was another big one, the Battle of Midway, yeah. Battle of the Coral Sea, the Solomon Islands mm -hmm. and the book basically gives you forces for everything uh, you want to field in this area. So you can have a look at this. Uh, I wish I could pronounce that, but that's an infantry company and it shows, as all Flames of War books do, the breakdown, uh, the required units in the dark black and the right. other units in grey. Um, what's nice is that for me as a tank person, mm. we're swinging this round towards tanks, um, you didn't get to see a lot of tank warfare in the Pacific yeah. because A, the Japanese didn't make very many, B, the Japanese tanks were rubbish, right. and C, the terrain didn't work very well. Right. Um, but there are, for there are tank forces in this. There's uh -huh. even, which is really kind of cool, a Sencha tank company which also has amphibious tanks. Those are cute! See the image down there. Aren't those weird? They're cute! It's like a boat with a little turret on it, but it still <laughs> has tracks. And I like it! This is all sort of like, the Japanese thought, you know, we might need some amphibious stuff, yeah. although we're holding these islands, we don't need them that much. They were present, but not in very uh, large numbers. Oh, I like the look of this. Yes, shall we show this off? This is some of the American and Japanese stuff. Hmm. So, uh, let me see, up here at the top you can see LVTs, uh -huh. uh, which are Amtraks, as the, the modern military will call them, the amphibious tanks, Aye. Uh, with the Marines rocking up in there. Bit of beach landing going on. Mm. And our <laughs> amphibious Sencha company coming up there as well. Yeah. So a lot of nice images as usual. Yeah. Um, a I'm lot looking of good forward stuff to seeing there. what sort of tables we see for this. To actually see people building those island tables with the ocean on one side, mm -hmm. it's going to be very cool to see what comes. It is. Out of I'm with you on this, Justin, because um, as I just, I'm just going to lift it and look at it. Yeah. It's the it's the contrast between. The beach, the water, and the jungle. Yeah. You know, you've got three very distinct colours, blue, sandy, yellows, yeah. and then green. Yeah. And it just opens up all the all the possibilities. Because a lot of a lot of flames of war at the minute you look at it, European. European. Yeah, we're, European. yeah we're, we're in a French village. We're in a French village. We're in a Belgian village. Like, and we're in a German village. Like that picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With all the all the colours and stuff. So I'm looking yeah. forward to that as well. Yeah. yeah. Just nice. just before we move on. Yes. The Japanese then. 
forgive my ignorance about the range, but is it is there is it a new range coming out, or what's what is it with the Japanese? There's bound to be a lot of new stuff coming out here because this is a, a theater that Flames War hasn't particularly looked at too much. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, some of the models for the Americans probably already exist. Yeah. The, the LVTs and that were used to cross the Rhine in, in Germany. Um, but we're looking at a lot of nice little Japanese vehicles and a lot of Japanese infantry and artillery on the way. Okay, next book. Gung Ho. Yes. <laughs> Everything about this is all my yes. So this again covers the same sort of periods um, from the Battle of Guadalcanal right up uh, to Okinawa. And I'm going to try and pick out some particular images that I was looking at. Aha! Exactly what you were talking about, tables. So can we get a bit closer on that one? You actually have your zones, so you have your sea zone, yep. you have your reef, uh, lagoon, and beach. So they actually have areas of uh, water, yeah. and that actually affects the game. Which is cool because <clears throat> when I'm first thinking about tables like that, I'm thinking of the ocean's only there for a decorative thing. Yeah. But not in this case, not because this. the ocean is actually, because of all the landing craft, mm. especially this page that you just picked yes. up, yeah, <laughs> the, showing us the sea is very much part of the game. Yeah. Mm. And they've worked it out as well. Uh, it's showing here some American landing craft coming in here. Yeah. And this is actually showing current drift. Oh, right. landing that's cool. craft. So I'm aiming for here, but because of my role, I'm ending up down here? Yeah. So it depends how far you drift, and if it's a six, you're getting on pretty much where you want to be. Aye. Which is really cool, and it's a nice little mechanic. Mm. Uh, I think a lot of games could benefit from something like it's, that. It's nice to see that they've thought about it as more than just a decorative piece. Yes. Because that, that's what it could have been. It could have just been, oh, you, you've landed on beach. Here's your, your deployment. It's on the beach. Yep. So lots of different scenarios. We have um, Saipan landings yeah. and so on like that. This is all oh, the yeah, island hockey like campaign. You like the look of this? I like right, the I'll look show, of this. I'll show this then. This, this is one of the big beach landing segments that they have in the, the center fold of the book. Yeah. And it, again, all our landing craft are LVTs. Yeah. The Marines are rocking up. We have bunkers in there. Um, this and, is very cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to see what terrain they actually bring out for this because it's such a different theater. It's such a different sort of part of the world that they're in. Yeah. Because it is so much more tropical, and you're seeing such a difference in the actual build design of structures over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's going to be very interesting to see what they bring out. Yeah, and just as I was flicking through this, I, I came across a page, and I went, "Oh, the Marines have got some serious heavy firepower behind them." Right. Because bear in mind, the Japanese and the Japanese Navy Aye. basically stopped being effective after uh, the the Marianas, the Marshall Islands, and that sort of stuff, Aye. where the likes of most of the carrier fleet got sunk uh, the, and uh, destroyed during the what they call it, the Marianas Turkey shoot, yeah. uh, where most of the planes got shot down. Um, but the American Navy, because mm. of the, the men and women back home building the ships, yeah. have a huge naval presence. Aye. Well, and the, the war industry, once it kicked into high gear, they were churning out ships like no one's business. Absolutely, and it plays to this book. It plays ah. to Gung Ho, and this is what I wanted to show. You oh. get carrier support, you get warship support. Lovely! <laughs> so you can choose between heavy cruiser, light cruiser, or a destroyer. Nice. And you can even check out um, aircraft carriers and observation oh, planes, yes. that sort of stuff. So yes. you are, you're getting the feel from this book mm. of the Americans being that big military industrial might appearing mm. and going, right, well, I may not have artillery on my beach landing force, but there's a couple of heavy cruisers two miles offshore that are shelling you. Yeah, and which is cool. That's what I like. So I can actually call in shots and stuff yeah. as I'm trying to get my landing craft on the beach. Yeah. Oh, I've drifted! Ah, doesn't matter, I'm just going to bomb them anyway with my <laughs> artillery from miles away. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, look at look at the head of the beach. There, there's a ton of machine gun nests up there. <clears throat> Calling in artillery support, please! It's something the American Navy was very good at and probably mm. still is very good at. Yeah. They were able to drop shells anywhere they wanted on, on shore. Yeah. Um, a couple of other things, painting guides. Painting guides are quite interesting for this because, uh -huh. unlike the European theatre, it's not just green, green, or green. Ah. Yeah. So we actually have some camouflage patterns. Even on the infantry, we have some camouflage that, uh, mm. and they show, show up. they show a little guide on how to do the Pacific theatre camouflage. Nice. Sort of deserty, sort of sandy colours. Yeah. And on the tanks as well. Oh, that's nice. Just something, it's a little bit different, I think, from a painting perspective. Mm. Uh, it gives them a different flavour. Yeah, from a painting perspective, these books are very interesting because you get to break away from that 
German three-tone camouflage, that yeah. American green, the British green, the Russian green, yeah. and you get to break out and actually do something a little bit different. That's cool. I mm -hmm. like that. I, I, like I, I kind of like the idea of getting some Mustangs and stuff in there as well. <laughs> yeah. You know, because let's not forget about the air support and stuff, because I see it in the book. Yeah, there are uh, the likes of Corsairs and fighter bombers and stuff like that. Mm. And the best thing is a few of the models of those, they're not boring green either they are no. like this beautiful navy blue and with the have, striking yellow wing yeah, tips striking and yellow yeah, and yeah. everything in there and you can paint them with like the, the engine cowlings being in like a yellow black checker pattern Aye. and stuff like that something really out of the box and really interesting looking yeah. do i know what i want to see someone do i want to see someone actually take some to scale ship models <laughs> and actually perhaps do that on a table i, want, I think that would look really cool one to one hundred ships they're huge. Really? They, yeah, a 1 to 100 ship. Um, let's say HMS Belfast. The okay. HMS Belfast is a, a, a heavy cruiser. Okay. At 1 to 100 scale would be about 5 feet long. That would still look awesome. <laughs> it would look absolutely <laughs> on a six, amazing. On a 6 by 4 <laughs> table, your entire deployment zone is your ship. <laughs> yeah, but... I think or a part just, of it. I think it would just look really cool. Just do... Even if you did a six foot by twelve foot table, mm -hmm. and just at one end you had this big naval cruiser, big bit of ocean, then the beach, and then you were deploying it from there. Do you know what I would do? If I you'd be standing in your kitchen, <laughs> you'd start planning your. No, room I, I and mean, find for, I in mean your kitchen. for like something to take to salute, a big display board, something big, amazing, and beautiful. This is not a home board. This is an epic board, the aspirational piece. That's what I want to see. Do, do you know what I do? As if I was playing. U.S. Marine Corps and I took us to a tournament. Yeah, I would have a little, little bag, a little roll, and a couple of little stands, and I'd set everything up on my table. And behind me, I'd unfurl this thing, <laughs> and it would be a twelve-foot silhouette of a destroyer, <laughs> just going. That's come my on. support back there. <laughs> that's I, that's I, I, my support. support. Just so you know, that's an idea. Silhouettes. You could get a projector, yeah. and yeah. then you could project moving silhouettes of ships on the wall and say, "That's mine." <laughs> See that, that one, one there. See that one that's sinking? That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right. O awesome, awesome stuff. Mm. Again, yeah. the two books are both out on April 9th. They are, yeah. Yep. People are deadly excited about this. Yeah. Mm. Also, I'm assuming these will probably end up being at Salute, so make sure and drop off at the Battlefront stand while, we're here, while you're there. Yeah. Mm. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of, of um, specific tables and stuff appearing on the internet. Yeah, yeah. I just think it looks like a really cool environment. Right. Next up, you are talking, Justin, with Alessio about the hunt for Red October. Yeah, look, I, I tell you what, I want to do this with John, okay? So I'm going to send you away, <gasps> and we'll chat to Alessio. Okay. We'll see you after some hubs. Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the Reconquest and fight the Scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at beastsofwar.com. Enter into the dangerous dungeons of myth as a mighty hero and stand against the darkness. Visit the Myth Hub on beastofwar.com and begin your story. Okay guys, we are back with Alessio for another of the IP that you've picked up. Now, Very interesting I think ones. we have seen this before. You've picked up the IP for The Hunt for Red October. Uh, that's correct, indeed. Mm -hmm. It's quite bizarre, but that actually was the first one we, 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 we started really? with. Uh, yes, 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 uh, long ago. And uh, we, you know, it probably suffers from being the first one, so that we weren't quite sure of finding our, we, we were finding our feet in the world mm -hmm. of licensing and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we started in one direction, mm -hmm. and uh, then we hit some snags, and also a Terminator came in. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so by, things got crazy. Yeah, things got crazy. Then labyrinth, you know, now, now the ponies. It's like kind of going, oh my god, this is almost. Like... <laughs> so this one, because of the snags we were thinking in terms of design, mm. we 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 never overcame those. Then we decided, okay, let's scrap this like, original idea for the design, start a new one, mm -hmm. and that also hit some problems. Okay. <laughs> so we're like, okay. So eventually, what we all looked at each other and went. Wait a second. We all really, really enjoy playing Waterloo. We mm -hmm. think it's a great system. So I assume that's where this has came from then. <laughs> yes. So. so basically, we went, okay, how about we use the same engine, effectively, mm -hmm. for Waterloo, and create a game which is two things. Like, you know, Waterloo has the, the historical setup, and then you have the night before the battle mini scenario where you mm -hmm. kind of go, what if then uh, you know, the, the, the setting was different, etc., and the battle started differently. Mm -hmm. 
And this one would be effectively, <laughs> we go back to the 80s, you know, the old LCD screens in terms <laughs> yeah, of looks, yeah. you know, where when you see <laughs> in the movie, you see the, the, the red dots and the blue or white dots. Kind yeah, of. so what, what are we seeing on screen here? Oh, these are these are mockups for the for what the map is going to look like. I mean, not exactly like that, but you know, that's the, the the inspirations of what we're going for. We're going eighties, mm -hmm. eighties LCD screen. Or imagine yeah. you're on an aircraft carrier, yeah. you know, in a dark room with all this kind of. Okay, so you know. we have the war setup and the hunt setup. So that's that's the two types. You yeah, have the the setup from the the story. And then the night before the battle idea that you can actually play things yourself a little bit. It's actually the other way around. Uh, the oh, game right. itself, the, the, the normal thing would be a, a warfare, like an 80s Cold War uh -huh. gone hot scenario where the, where the fleets, the, the North fleets of, of the Soviet Union and the NATO uh -huh. get involved and start to fight. Um, and that's the, you know, the normal game if you want. It's just mm -hmm. a battle game between that uh, and yeah. Cold War. Cold War battle game, fleet battle game, and then you have a scenario which is actually the hunt for Red October, where instead you have the, the this modified typhoon with a silent navigation and it's trying to make its way to to the US. And mm -hmm. so the, the the submarines are a big part to, even in a normal in a normal battle, of course. But obviously this submarine is better than the other ones, and, and the mechanics are for me. I mean, if you played Waterloo just yeah. recently, and uh, I seem that you and Warren seem to enjoy it a lot, and oh, yeah, I was yeah, really was pleased to see that. And basically, with that engine, with the activation, very similar. So imagine instead of activating cores, you're activating units of fleets, mm -hmm. different type. Of yeah, and we'll still have our our card stuff. So I assume this is. Some of the card backing. Those are yeah. the back of the cards. Yeah, if some of the the decks in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, some marine cards, etc., and uh, the two fleets. Mm -hmm. uh, then the actual game components. If it's going Waterloo style, I assume we're going to have lots of tokens again, same as in yes. Waterloo. Yes, indeed. And uh, we're going to Kickstarter this. Oh right. So where it's going to end up, we'll see. But yes, you know, the, our target, our normal target, would be Waterloo version of mm -hmm. this. So effectively, imagine almost a series of games uh -huh. which have the same. The same engine, the same format, ideally. So you have a like bookcase where you go, right, okay, I have Waterloo, then I have for October, mm -hmm. the next one is going to be the Battle of Meep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and then, then, then the <laughs> next battle, oh, we're already working on some of those, but yeah, you know, right. not announced yet. So oh, no, fair same enough. engine, battle games, not, not identical, because obviously you can write something that it works yeah. perfectly well for Napoleonic well, Warfare and submarine fleet yeah, warfare I, I, in the Cold I War. I expect units to act a lot differently in this to how they act in Waterloo, because in Waterloo, you know, you're seeing the units marching toward each other, mm -hmm. having that, that pressure cooker that you've spoken to, to me about, where it's just, okay, we're playing a game of checking who's going to fire first. You know, yeah, but on the other hand, it's true. I mean, the, the subject is different, but the rules are not minions, by the way, because again, it's the game of chicken, mm -hmm. where with some Marines involved, it's like, when you fire, you know, you may do a lot of damage, but then you're also revealing yourself. Yeah. And then expect to be fired upon, kind of thing. <laughs> so there is a that, that tension in there. And yes, the rules are different, mm -hmm. uh, but the core engine actually is the same. Yeah. It, you know, you, you've seen the deck activations and mm -hmm. your hand of cards. So yeah, it feels very familiar. I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to this. This is looking like it's going to be a lot of fun. And I love the art direction you've taken with it, keeping it to that old school 80s style. Yeah. What do you think, John? Oh well, Hunt for Red October was a fantastic movie anyway, <laughs> <laughs> with, with uh, Sean Connery doing the worst Russian accent I've ever heard, <laughs> as in he didn't try. <laughs> no, but I, I think it's good that he didn't try, because if he had tried, it would have sounded horrendous. It would have sounded absolutely terrible. But yes. Ah, you can't do Connery. <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's going to be an interesting one, because like you said, with using the same game engine on several different battles, you are going to have that familiarity to it. Mm. So if you've played Waterloo, uh, you can come to Red October and go, I know the basics, but what's different? Why is this? You know, what's the, the fleets? How mm. do they act? How, you know, all their abilities and stuff like that. It's going to be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. And e even just the setup for the battle lines will be very different mm -hmm. in this, because in Waterloo, you're setting up for that pitch battle. In this, things might be a little bit more, shall we say, covert. Yeah, and also, I mean, the, the, it's cool because it actually is NATO, so you have effectively British components because it's set in the North Sea, so you have the, the NATO fleet, which is the British mm -hmm. uh, cruisers and, and, and submarines there, and then the, the Americans come in from the South with the big Nimitz class, etc. Mm -hmm. and the, the Russians send in all the, all the, the ships with such a cool name, you know, the, the Soviet assets have such, you know, you just look at the name and go, it, it's part of what, why the film is so cool, it's mm -hmm. all, you know, the Konoval of uh, the Alpha class <laughs> attack submarines, you know, Typhoon class, you know, ooh, yeah. That sounds all very impressive, you know. Mm -hmm. In Americans, you know, Los Angeles attack of submarine, you know, the Dallas and all this. Yeah. So it's all very 
cool Cold War y kind of war. <laughs> you're, you're sat in your dark room and the American player is going, I've got 500 killers coming towards you. And yeah. The Russians going, I've got three Typhoon class come at me, you know, yeah, all that yeah. sort of stuff. And is that scene in the movie, sorry, when they go, well, the satellite has uh, just picked up the the, 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 the the engine room of the Kirov is lighting up. So all the, all the Soviet fleet of the north is, mm. is, you know, is preparing to, to say, oh, they, is that feeling of, Ooh, what's going to kick off very here? Kind very of atmospheric, thing, you know? yeah. And the names, mm. the Kirov, the Mosca, yeah. uh, moving <laughs> out of port. I kind of go, ooh, big cruisers, big cruisers <laughs> with big, huge guns, kind of thing. The one thing this game really needs mm. is a soundboard. So that you can just have the, the radar ping, ping, <laughs> or just ping, have running down the background sonar. as, you, as just, you go. Just have the theme music playing through the entire. There's game. a fantastic yeah. music mm. by the same guy that did, uh, that did the most Polidoris, which did the uh, Conan the Barbarian. So, I mean, his music is fantastic. Yeah, so, actually, yeah. having the, the soundtrack or even the movie in the background playing, you know, with, yeah. you know, just one ping only, one ping only Vasily. <laughs> one ping only. <laughs> kind of thing. It, it just, yeah, very cool. Aye. Mm -hmm. no, I, I think this, this is going to be a very, very cool one. And it's, it's another great IP that you guys have picked up. It's something that I've noticed from River Horse. You are really hunting for big IPs at the minute. Well, I mean, certainly this is not in the as size wise, it's not my little pony, but but it's I think we live in the eighties. I, I was a kid in the eighties. A lot mm. of the stuff I've seen in the eighties stayed with me and formed me, you know, labyrinth, stuff like that mm. were actually I mean, almost like I'm picking the things I really love mm. and I really want to share. I want to make a game about the labyrinth because that was my thing. <laughs> I want to do all oh, Red October. I love that movie. I keep watching it. I can, you know, every yeah. time he's on, I'll watch it again because it's just so cool. And okay, so for, for anyone that's wondering what's coming up next from Riverhorse, have a look at Alessio's favourite films of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, well, uh, is there anything else we want to say about this game? Well, please join us on Kickstarter and you know, let's see where we can get this. Well, Thank you. Guys, I will say this, stay tuned because whenever it does hit Kickstarter, we will give you a shout out and let you know that it's live and you can jump in on it. So, yeah, and uh, in the meantime, you can go on the River Ross website and register for our newsletter so we'll keep you informed mm -hmm. to yep. when this is coming up. Okay, cool. Well, guys, we'll tell you about some hubs and we'll see you in a minute. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jax, arcane devices, and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Flames of War brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to the Hub on BeastsOfWar.com to find news, tactics, and tutorials about the game. Interesting stuff as always from yeah. Alessio. It's interesting to see how the mechanics and stuff of the game were panning out. Uh, we, it, see, it's, it's that bridge between it and Quella Fair, seeing that yeah. if I can play one, I can play the other, you know, but the tactics are going to change because I'm working with different units. Yeah. You know, I really like that idea. Ben, a board game about the hunt for Red October, what do you think of that? I think it's fantastic as long as I get to do my Sean Connery impression as I'm playing, because I'm definitely Russian and not Scottish. <laughs> yes. That'll what be the was way that? That, that, was, <laughs> that was so much better when we were off camera and we thought, Ben could do this little joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, oh. That was fantastic. That was Moving swiftly again. along. Brush that one under the rug. Yeah, What's yeah. next up, yeah, Ben? Forget, forget the impressions, Ben. Forget it. Oh, <laughs> I doubt if Holly was going to be knocking on your door any time oh, soon, mate. That All was right. great. Okay, <laughs> anyway. It's been a, it's been a jam-packed show. We have room, just about enough room, for one Kickstarter. Okay. And one Kickstarter jumped out at is The World of Twilight. What's this? The World of Twilight, what, Ben? Cassini. Cassini of. Cassani. How do you say Cassini. this? Yeah, so this is The World of Twilight, which is a sort of strange and quirky skirmish game that exists. And it was been on Kickstarter before and it was exceptionally well funded. They've come back to Kickstarter again with a very modest goal to fund the Cassani of Anarial. There which you are go. their new uh, race of warriors that they're bringing to the game. So, yeah. No, they're really funky looking stuff. That's why I thought, oh, we'll just squeeze them in at the end I, of the show. I remember these guys. Were they not at Salute a few years back? Yeah, they were, yeah. yeah, yeah. They've they been at really Salute. Cool They've been, team. you know, funding well and doing, doing good stuff over the yeah. past couple of months, yeah. Well, it's, it's really cool. No, the likes of this. I like the trader. It's not often you see a lizard sitting on top of another lizard with an umbrella. I, swear, I just love the quirkiness of this yeah, race. It's... It yes. really just jumps out and says, hi, would you mind having a look? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the, the thing that, I, I, like, as you say, really grabbed me about this is the fact that all their monsters and all of their creatures and their characters are all totally different from anything that you've really seen on the tabletop before. Mm. And like, their whole world is fascinating and there's a very 
deep and rich lore behind it. You can find all about it on their website. They've got loads and loads of pages going into the different factions and things. Mm. Uh, the Kasani sound really cool as well. They're like these fierce tribal warriors that are spreading out throughout the southern empire. And there are certain diver diverse races within them as well. So yeah, mm. sounds fantastic. The creatures are really cool. Yes. Yeah. They all remind me very much of uh, the sort of creatures you potentially would have seen in sort of old 70s and 80s films that were sort of animated as puppets. Mm. Uh, kind of things that you might see for like June or something like that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Really cool. Well, they've been busting through stretch goals like nobody's business here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They've done really well. They've unlocked a bunch of extra sets and things like that. So mm -hmm. you can build upon the skirmish uh, group as you go and things. Yeah. yeah well, Very it's, cool. It's, it's gone down really well because originally their funding goal was, it was something, it was pretty low. It was about $1,000 or something. Yeah, about 1000 yeah. 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 And they're already way past that. So people... I'm not the only one who looked at this range and thought, that's so funky, I have to have some of yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I would say if, if there is a look this year, I think during my lunch break, I might just you know sneak away and have a, have a peek. Absolutely, good idea. We'll check them out at Salute. Right, that pretty much wraps up the show. Before we yeah. go, I'm going to remind you about that prize. If you want to be in with a chance of winning an awesome set of six buildings yeah. from Battlefield in a Box. Yeah, from their premium building range. Oh, yeah. yes. Comment here below on Beast of War, yeah. Facebook, or the YouTube video, yep. get your comments in, and you guys will be in with a chance of winning that awesome set. Mm -hmm. Right, we'll see you tomorrow on the Backstage Show. If you're not a Backstager, come on over to Beast of War. There's a little sign-up form. You can try it out. Come yep. on over. It's a seven-day free trial. And give Backstage and all our other content yep. a little go and see what you think. Right, guys? We'll see you tomorrow. In a world controlled by massive corporations, a steady aim and split-second decisions are needed for your Megacom to complete its goals. Begin your missions at the Mercs Hub on beastofwar.com. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastofwar.com.